Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in a famous hadith says, I am Muhammad and my name is Ahmed. I am Muhammad and my name is Abdullah. And then he says, and I am Muhammad and my name is Israel. My name is Israel. Wow. so much for joining me again, Tiffany. Thank you so much for having me here. Today, I want to talk to you about the state of Israel. Okay. Okay. And uh, I want to talk about whether or not uh, the state of Israel and uh, the so-called Israelis have the right to even call themselves Israelis or even have a right to the name of Israel. Okay. In order to answer that question, I think we're going to have to go back a little bit in history and take a look once again, as we always do, to the Torah, to the Gospels, and to the Quran and narrations of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. Okay, sounds good. So when we go into the Torah, first of all, we find out that uh, the kingdom of Israel is a, is a term which is used to describe the kingdom of the children of Jacob. Mm-hmm. Because the name Israel itself was a name that God gave to uh, Jacob. Yes. And in the Bible, it said that in the Hebrew, the meaning of the name is he who wrestles with God, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So after Jacob wrestles with an angel mm-hmm. and manages to defeat him, uh, God bestows upon him this new name. So it's God that gives Jacob the name Israel. Yes. And so Israel, we know now, is the name of a prophet, mm-hmm. and it's a name that's beloved to God, and he bestows it upon his prophet that he loves. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. So it's like a divine name. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the Bani Israel uh, become are the are called that because they are the children of Israel. Yes. And the tribes of Israel are called that because they are the sons of Jacob or the sons of Israel. Yes. yes. Now Jacob has 12 sons, mm-hmm. okay? And uh, it is those 12 tribes, uh, those 12 sons that have the, uh, you know, offspring and descendants, each one of them uh, becoming a tribe. Yep. And so they're, they multiply, they become many. And then um, in the time of David uh, and Saul, there's this kingdom that's established. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saul is the first king of Israel. Israel is united. Uh, Now, all of the 12 tribes of Israel, all of the children of Jacob are being ruled by the same king, Mm -hmm. and that's Saul. And then they become ruled by David. Uh, David's the second king, often mistaken as the first, but he's the second. And uh, it's kind of like a golden age for Israel. Yes. And uh, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, they all agree that during this time period, uh, the name uh, of Israel given to that state is a legitimate name, and that's what it was called. It is the kingdom of Israel. Yes. Yeah, there's no uh, you know, arguing in terms of that. Mm-hmm. And then David passes along uh, the kingship and the successorship uh, and prophethood onto Solomon, his son, yes. who rules after him, mm-hmm. and he becomes the third monarch, uh, who uh, sits upon the throne of Israel. Uh, but the the monarchy of Israel does not last long. No. Now, it's here after the kingdom of Solomon. And Solomon, he kind of like his kingdom reaches an all-time high, according to uh, Islamic narrations especially, where he gains uh, authority over the wind, and he's given authority over the jinn, and he's given all kinds of wisdoms. And 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 even in the Bible, uh, the Torah, he has like 700 permanent wives, 300 concubines. He's conquering all over the place. In the Midrash, there's amazing stories about how he had uh, authority and powers over the nations and and uh, and uh, he's married to princesses, yes. the daughters of the neighboring uh, kings and queens. Yeah. Now, according to the Torah, what happens is that 
he ends up marrying people that are not so good mm -hmm. and they end up doing not so good things. What is it that they do? Uh, they're idol worshippers. They're people who worship other than God and it says that they led his heart astray. Um, that's what the Bible indicates. Okay, so he has all these wives. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not able to um, be with them all the time. And uh, many of these wives, because they come from different countries, they held on to their beliefs mm -hmm. and they were secretly worshiping um, idols. And, and this is not a strange thing that a, that a prophet has uh, bad wives. There were some prophets that only had like one or two wives and, and, and they were bad or one of them was bad, uh, like Prophet Lot or, or uh, uh, you know, Prophet Noah in the, in the Islamic tradition. And so, uh, and so he had some bad wives, mm -hmm. uh, and they end up building temples and, and worshiping idols and leading uh, the people astray. And according to the Torah, uh, even leading Solomon astray, this is a mistake that he does, yeah. uh, that he allows it's this, and tolerates mistake. this yeah. very big mistake. And so uh, God becomes angry with Solomon. He sends forward a prophet named Ahijah mm -hmm. and Ahijah has some bad news for Solomon. Yeah. And the bad news for Solomon is that is this prophecy that his kingdom is going to split into two. There's going to be a schism. There's going to be a fitna. And now his empire, the kingdom of Israel, is, is not going to be uh, united anymore. And uh, he appoints this prophet, announces that the successor of Solomon, which was originally intended to be Solomon's son, do you know his name? Rehoboam. Rehoboam is no longer going to be is no longer going to be the successor, and Ahijah appoints on behalf of God a new successor. Yes, and that is Jeroboam. Yeah. So this angers Solomon. Solomon becomes upset, and long story short, after the passing of Solomon, um, Jeroboam, having been appointed by the prophet Ahijah manages to get the bayah or the Pledge of Allegiance or the support of 10 of the tribes. Yes. So the descendants of 10 of the children of Israel, they all pledge allegiance and follow uh, Jeroboam and they reside in the north of Israel and they establish a kingdom which is called the Kingdom of Israel. Mm -hmm. It's not united because there's still two tribes, Judah and Benjamin that are rebelling against uh, Jeroboam, refusing to pledge allegiance to him, and are insisting on holding on tight to the son yes. of Solomon, Rehoboam. Yeah, it's a huge schism at that point. Yeah, a huge a splitting of the kingdoms. It's a big, big deal. The, the kingdom of the north and the kingdom of the south. And Jerusalem uh, ends up uh, remaining in the kingdom of the south. And, and uh, then what takes place is wondrous. So now you have a king who's ruling and the kingdom of the south ends up being called the kingdom of Judah. And there's the kingdom of the north, which is the kingdom of Israel. Mm -hmm. And they're not feeling one another. And they're at war with one another. And there's a lot of animosity uh, between the two of them. Yeah. And Jerusalem, the place where all of the Jews have to make pilgrimage to and their direction of, of worship is in the south, in the kingdom of Judah. Yes. Jeroboam, uh, you know, he wants to solve this matter. What am I going to do? You know, he's worried that because the holy city and the holy spot, the temple, is is within the kingdom of Judah, he fears that this is going to give uh, the kingdom of Judah, the kingdom of the south, legitimacy in the eyes of the Israelites. And so he makes a horrible mistake and he goes astray and he begins to establish uh, the worship of golden calves in his kingdom. And uh, because of this, God becomes extremely angry with him. Yeah. Yes. God brings down a punishment uh, upon this because uh, he cannot tolerate that his people and somebody who is appointed by his prophet, um, um, you know, go back and revert to the old ways of the Samaritan and the old ways of ancient Egypt and to betray the God of Israel. And so God sends against them uh, as a punishment, the Assyrians. Yes. The Assyrians go in, they capture the entire kingdom of Israel, and they pretty much take them all out. Yeah. 
they literally imprison, capture all of the 10 tribes and they take them out of Israel. And it says in the Bible that they scatter them amongst the nations. Nobody remains except for the kingdom of the South. The kingdom of the South, the kingdom of Judah is saved. The kingdom of the North, 10 tribes, they become lost, scattered. Wow. So no more Israel. No more Israel. There's only now the kingdom of Judah. Yeah. But that okay. doesn't last long either. That doesn't last long either. Why don't you tell us what happens? Oh, just uh, there. This is the famous Babylonian captivity. Uh, not long after Nebuchadnezzar comes in, takes them out, and uh, both kingdoms are no more. So now, uh, you know, like Jesus said, any time a house is split upon its own self, it uh, fails. Yeah. Uh, and this is an example of that. The house of David, the house of Israel uh, split, and then they went astray, and one group got uh, captured. The other group obviously becomes prey to the more strong, and, and they're also um, receive the anger of God upon them. Why is it? Because uh, the Bible states that the king that was over them, the son of Solomon, Rehoboam, he's tyrannical, and he's not smart, he's immature, and he rules in a foolish way, and he oppresses his people, and so God sends the oppressor against him. Like in the, in the hadith of the Ahl Bayt, God says in a divine Qudsi hadith, um, you know, uh, the tyrant is a sword that I take revenge by, and then I take revenge from him. You know, meaning that God, sometimes he uses tyrants as a punishment, whether it be Hitler or Nebuchadnezzar or Pancha, you know, whoever it is that's oppressing the people at the time. He uses Saddam Hussein, all these uh, tyrants. These are punishments that God uses against his people that are sinning. And then in the end, he always takes revenge against them, too, because they're tyrants. Wow. It's so it's so true, actually. When you look back at biblical history, this is exactly what was always going on. Wow. Okay, so then, so then now they're both gone. Uh, the ten tribes are, are they're scattered amongst the nations. Nobody even knows anything uh, about them anymore. We're going to circle back around to what happens then to them. Okay. And the kingdom of Judah, uh, it's known now where they are. They're, they're still captured in Babylon and they're mm-hmm. under Nebuchadnezzar. Mm-hmm. And uh, they remain captured for, for quite a while. Yeah. Um, until they end up, uh, you know, returning back after uh, Cyrus and 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 uh, the rebuilding of the temple mm-hmm. once again, and they go back and they live in the lands of that was once called Israel. Yes, but the people that come back to Israel are not the twelve tribes. The people that come back are the people that were in Babylon. So the only ones that come back are not the kingdom of Israel, but rather only the kingdom of Judah. Wow. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Yeah. So now it's, it's, it's really after the Babylonian captivity, the, the, the second phase is only a kingdom of Judah return. And God says that he does this, he keeps them, you know, to fulfill his promise to David. What was his promise to David? That the Messiah would come from them. Yes. So the only reason why he from saves and Judah. returns yes. Judah back to the homeland is because he promised that he was going to send to them Jesus the Messiah. And so God fulfills this promise by keeping uh, the keeping, ki- keeping the wow. tribe of Judah, whom the Messiah was promised to come from, from being scattered amongst the nations. That so is so interesting. It is interesting, yeah. isn't it? So now uh, Jesus Jesus is sent. Uh, He comes to the kingdom of Judah and uh, the Judeans or the Jews. And that's the reason why the the people that are that follow this religion of Moses are called Jews. They're called Jews because they are from the tribe of Judah. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. But of course, it makes sense. Judah, Judaism, like, yes, yeah, of course. Judaism, and that is what was remained. So yeah. the religion uh, that is now called Ju- Judaism is not the religion of the of the Israel. It's the religion of the tribe of Judah. It's their understanding yes. of it. It's their writings of it. They name themselves after Judah, not after Israel. Okay. Okay? Yes, I, I see that. Wow. Okay. So then... What takes place, they reject their Messiah. It is the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, what remains of it. But in reality, it's actually the tribe of Judah who now uh, oppresses the Messiah. 
and who is guilty of rejecting him and guilty of yeah. basically uh, causing him to be sentenced to the, the cross. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's to, to be honest, like hearing how God kept his promise to the tribe of Judah, what he had said, he preferred them in so many ways, gave them so many chances. It makes it so much worse what happened how they rejected the messiah the the lion of judah like it's just uh, so tragic so then uh what takes place after that as you know the punishment takes place yeah um in That's 70 good. a.d and the romans come in they sack jerusalem and they disperse and send in exile the kingdom of judah um and now many of the jews uh, from the tribe of Judah, they become scattered amongst the nations. The tribe of Benjamin becomes scattered amongst the nations. And, uh, and obviously the other 10 tribes are already scattered. And so what takes place then? Then some of those Jews are able to hold on to their identity. And they continue to practice Judaism. So they remain. And it is, and most of them become scattered and dispersed. Yes. The 10 tribes and the ones that got dispersed and scattered, they all forget their identity. And the idea is, which we're going to come to, is that they are existing in the earth today and they don't even know who they are. They don't know that they are actual descendants of the prophet Jacob. They are actually descendants from the Jews and they are uh, of a different religion even, a uh, different culture, different nationality, but they don't know that that's their, their original history. Wow. And that's all from the Bible. And so, and so what takes place uh, after that is that after World War II, the Jews that are brought back into uh, the lands that are now called by the world Israel are the remnants of the tribe of Judah or the remnants of the kingdom of Judah before. Okay. And so uh, to, to, to call the country today Israel is actually a fallacy because it is only the, peop the people that are in there are Jews. They're not Israelites. They're yes. Jews. I get it. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. They're not Israelites. No, wow. it's the return of the kingdom of Judah, which is mixed with a bunch of uh, Gentiles who claim to be Jews, but they're not really descendants uh, of the kingdom of Judea, along with some real descendants uh, from Judah. Wow. Wow. Uh, that's a way of thinking about the whole situation that I that never occurred to me, but it's absolutely true. That's, yeah, that's, that's the history that's, when that's, you trace that's, it back. That's their own history. Wow. That's what their Old Testament is saying. It's not what, that's what their Torah is saying. It's yes. not what we're saying. Yeah. That's what happened. And then we come to the question of, okay, well, what happens now to these uh, lost tribes? Well, this is where the New Testament comes in. This is where the Bible comes in now. Okay. And we go to the book of Revelation and we, we get the answer in there. And the answer is that these uh, lost tribes of Israel... Uh, end up being gathered again. Mm -hmm. And they become gathered when, Tiffany? When Jesus returns, yeah. When in the Jesus second coming. When Jesus returns. Yeah. And when the Son of Man that states yes. gathers them. Yes. And there are 12,000 from every one of those tribes. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah, mm -hmm. 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from Dan, and, 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 until there's 12,000 times 12. Yeah. And it's 12,000 times 12 that makes up the 144,000 that appear on Mount, Mount Zion. Yes. Right? Yes. In the end times for the final battle of Armageddon. Wow. So how? How is this possible? How is this possible? And who are they? Yeah. That's a great mystery. It is but... a great mystery. And so, so now we know that the Messiah, which they, they killed and they rejected, he is the one who comes back in the end times with a character called the Son of Man, which the Christians consider the Son of Man to be Jesus. Yes. But 
also uh, there's the, the opinion that the Son of Man is not Jesus, but he's actually um, the Mahdi of Islam that Jesus comes down with. And it is in that time of Jesus and the Mahdi that brings forward the, the lost tribes of Israel and brings them home. And so the real state of Israel comes, but it comes only with the return of the true Messiah of Israel. Yes. So this that we have... Is a fake Israel. Wow. It's just the kingdom of Judah. It's the Jews, the tribe of Judah, along with some Gentiles, trying to pose and speak on behalf of the rest of the tribes. Oh, my gosh. That's a bombshell. The, really, this, this whole discussion is a bombshell because it's a completely different way of thinking about um, of the state of Israel that we have today and what is really supposed to take place. There's all these prophecies in the, in the Old Testament um, talking about the, like prophesizing mm -hmm. that there will be a uh, return, uh, like a gathering mm -hmm. of the scattered tribes. And then this is mentioned, as you said, again, in Revelation, this is the fulfillment. Yeah. And they claim that what has happened in the building of the state of Israel is this gathering, but it's clear from the evidence mm -hmm. that that is not the case. Yeah, and you have this and, country now with this prime minister and this government that's uh, doing all, committing all these acts and doing all these things and launching wars and saying that they speak on behalf of, the, of all Israelis and that they are Israel. Um, when in reality, uh, we know by their own book that most of Israel, uh, 10 tribe, 10 other tribes from Israel, they uh, last saw them when they were in conflict with each other. Yeah. So those last 10 tribes, last time they were together, they weren't even, they were declaring themselves innocent from these Jews. Yes. They were like, we're doing tabarro from them. We have nothing uh, to do with these guys. These guys are evil and they're following a fake vice chair uh, that was not appointed um, by God. And, and it was these 10 tribes who also went astray, but now... Uh, they could be anywhere in the world and they could be not feeling and not in agreement or alignment with the actions of those who are speaking on behalf of all of them. Because Israel only means the collective voice of the 12 tribes. Without the 12 tribes, there is no Israel. For Israel to exist, it has to be the 12. It has to. It has to. So we have a stolen kingdom. A stolen kingdom. Wow. And that is the kingdom of Judah. Wow. Okay, so where are these tribes now? And and is there any more is there any more hints or evidence behind where they could be? And I think that the answer comes. Uh, now we talked about Judaism, we talked about Christianity. Let's look at Islam. Maybe Islam, maybe it has the key. Okay. Let's maybe do it. that's where it's at. Okay. Well, we have some really interesting hadith um, in Islam from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, Where, so the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, he comes, he brings the Quran, and the Quran has in it uh, lots of stories of, of the children of Israel. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Focus on it, focus on it, focus on it. And it mentions Moses more than it does any other prophet. Yeah. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, in a famous hadith says, he says, I am Muhammad and my name is Ahmed. And Muslims know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has many names. One of his names is Muhammad, one's Ahmed, one's Mahmoud, one's Mustafa. These are all names of the Habib. These are all names of the beloved prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he has a lot of names. Mm -hmm. So in this hadith, he says, I am Muhammad and my name is Ahmed. I am Muhammad and my name is Abdullah. So Abdullah is also one of his names. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadin, Abduhu, Rasuluh. He's Rasulullah and he's Abdullah. Okay. And then he says, and I am Muhammad, and my name is Israel. My name is Israel. Wow. Whatever was given to Israel is given to me. And whatever was meant by Israel was meant for me. And then another hadith clarifies that any 
the Ahl Bayt said, any verse in the Quran which is positively speaking about the Israelites is actually speaking about Muhammad and the family of Muhammad Wow. So how can we have a verse in the Quran speaking about the children of Israel, but it also applies to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his family and his true followers, because people that are from the family of Muhammad are also people like Salman, who are not physically his descendants, but people that are close to him, unless the lost tribes of Israel became followers of the religion of Islam and followers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wow. And so here we get the secret. The secret's unlocked in this hadith where the Prophet says, Israel is my name. I'm Israel. Wow. And so his followers, because he said, I am the father of the nation. So anybody who's a follower of Muhammad is a Bani Muhammad. And if Muhammad, his name is Ahmed, then they're Bani Ahmed, or Bani Mustafa, or Bani Mahmoud, or Bani Israel. Wow. There's the followers, the true followers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we find out that the 10 tribes that made up the kingdom of Israel, they became scattered and they went past the Euphrates into Iraq and into these different countries that now became Muslim countries. And they ended up following Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. And so he has followers that are Muslim. These tribes now are Muslim tribes that recognize uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're still scattered. It doesn't mean that like all of Iran or all of Iraq or all of Lebanon are members. No, but particular true believers that are amongst these people. Uh, but they recognize Muhammad. These are where the uh, 10 tribes are. And it is the Mahdi السلام, who will be able to distinguish them uh, because out of all of these Muslims, the ones that pledge allegiance and recognize the Mahdi and, recognize, and you can only recognize Jesus the son of Mary if you're with the Mahdi because Jesus, according to the narrations, he appears while the people are praying with the Mahdi. So only those who pledge allegiance to the Mahdi recognize the Mahdi are going to be able to recognize Jesus. And it is those who are with Jesus and with the Mahdi who are the 144,000 or the 12 tribes of Israel. And then, and from them obviously is also from the tribe of Judah because there will be people in the current uh, so-called state of Israel uh, that will end up actually recognizing and converting to the religion uh, of the of the Mahdi, and there's also descendants of Judah that are still around the world that are not citizens of Israel. All of those people will end up following the Mahdi, and so that is the reason why the name Israel is. It's not allowed to call the state of Israel Israel. It would be offensive to those other tribes, and it's just not a reality. It's not a reality by the standards of the Torah. It's not a reality by the standards of the Gospels, you can't be a Jew and you can't be a Christian if you are calling the current state Israel because it's just not what it is. And now we know who they are. And now we know that this war, this ancient war that has been taking place between the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah is still going on today That's in the form of this war between the Jews and the Muslims. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. This this uh, scriptural explanation for what's going on and this this ancient uh, it goes back much further than we even realize. Uh, this this rivalry between the Muslims and the the, the Jewish people uh, it's actually you know going back to the time of Solomon. That's just that's amazing. So now we have this name and that all of the Arabs are cursing. Uh, and they're saying, you know, down with, with Israel and death to Israel, when in reality they shouldn't say it because it's a name of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's crazy. And, it's so and, true. And it's time now for those tribes of Israel and the Ansar of Imam Mahdi to reclaim back uh, those symbols that are being stolen by the tribe of Judah and, and being hoarded as if it only belongs to them. And it needs to be uh, taken away from them and proudly raised up by the true 12 tribes uh, and those are the ones whom follow 
the Mahdi alayhi salam and Jesus the Messiah of the children of Israel uh, in this time. And this name, uh, Israel, it's a holy name that belonged to a prophet and, and it was Jacob and it is a holy name and is one of those names that uh, belong to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Israel sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the best of uh, creation. You know, I'm, I feel really excited and really happy to know that the the true Israel, the true uh, coming together of these scattered tribes uh, is coming. It is coming. And it's already here. It's just a matter of, of, of them coming forward now and recognizing who the Mahdi is. And by recognizing who the Mahdi is, they're going to recognize themselves and they're going to restore um, the true state of Israel, a divine just state, and the state of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. Amazing. God bless you, Tiffany, and thank you again for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Assalamu alaikum.